And good morning, everybody. First of all, I would like to thank you now, the organizer and everyone, the chairman, the, for giving me this opportunity. My talk is about uh, 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 other great experimental crystals for learning of applications. I, uh, this talk, I'm going to focus on the uh, characterized ground state of electricity and uh, second harmonic generation measurements. In the beginning, I'll give you a little bit of uh, uh, background and uh, information about this talk. Then I will show you how to characterize the ground state and ferro electricity of this material. Then, SHG measurements, you will finally do the summary of the talk. Um, as you know, today's commercial aluminum open materials are still inorganic crystals, such as this, this is not it. This picture shows various inorganic crystals. They are uh, beautiful, but they are costly and difficult to process. So, organic aluminum open materials include organic crystals, polymers, and gas house systems. They have lots of advantages over inorganic crystals, but also they suffer from some problems. So, organic aluminum optic materials are mainly in, at the stage of the research and development. So, recently, the metal operation, they produce a 100 gigahertz electro optical polymer intensity modulator. This will hold a bright future for organic aluminum optic materials. So, as you know, ferroelectric liquid crystal has an intrinsic polar order, uh, don't they need a high field uh, polling. So, their polar direction vary with the field. This makes uh, them, uh, make them to even produce complex devices. So, we are very interested in this area. The previous studies on road ship nonlinear uh, non optical FLCs uh, prove the principles, but uh, they are deficient in size of nonlinear optical stress. Uh, and you can see from this compound to Rocha 1, even the details was increased a lot, but uh, still it's too small for nonlinear optical applications. Why? It's because uh, they have the weak ground force along the FLC polar axis. Um, recently, in 1996, uh, Professor Ding Wap he designed this S shaped diamond like materials. It's pretty. So, in this structure, two rod shaped FLC was linked by a conjugated bridge. So, this structure allows for incorporate of strong form of along the polar axis. So, but the previous materials only show the symmetric A phase or monotropic symmetric C star phases. So, we are interested in this uh, uh, materials. So, and also many of the applications, we are going to make the materials with uh, some of the dynamic stable, some of the dynamic stable metric star phase, and uh, uh, by modifying these structures. Uh, here shows four different types of compounds we design and synthesize. Look at this structure. There's only a azyl uh, bridge, no dollar receptor. This compound has diastamino uh, dollar also to the current center. It's a DRI chromophore. In this compound, we reverse the dollar receptor. Here, the latter group is also to the current center. In this compound, we, put, we introduce a trifloral methyl group to replace this methyl group. Here is the phase sequence for these, these four compounds. This compound has symmetric A star phase, symmetric C star phase. This only has symmetric C star phase. This compound has symmetric A star phase. This non-equilibrium crystal phases. 
For these two compounds, we can directly measure the polarization. Since these two compounds don't have a symmetric C surface, so we, uh, we, get, we got the extrapolated polarization by doping them into this symmetric C host. The style of polarization here was predicted by all the model. It's also consistent with dipole moment uh, by uh, calculation, by molecular modeling. Here shows the mo molecular modeling structures of four different compounds. The magenta arrow shows the dipole moment for each of them. Here is the original pattern 
manners as you talk in Japan. We try to uh, we try to uh, enhance the art of defense gathering. Uh, here is a Sita scan, so we can get the uh, layer species for Sigma A phase and the Sigma C phase. The layer species almost um, is very close, suggests uh, um, a de maybe decrease the behavior of this material. This is a extra to the angle. Um, this uh, switch current response shows only one single peak. One single peak suggests a F, uh, FE switching. And uh, we developed the circuit domains with, with extinction brushes inclined to cross our analyzer. This is 0 volts, and uh, this is minus 30 volts, uh, plus 30 volts. This uh, uh, Suggest uh, indicate uh, by stable speech for this material. So, we, in order to confirm the ground state of electricity, we're going to make a racemic. And you know, in, uh, in the racemic material, uh, the, in shear uh, textures, the two brush similarities. Uh, uh, was are forbidden in cement C phase, but are generally observed in cement C A phase. So that's why we we have this 2368 SS we made up its its net RR2722. So by mix one to one we make receiving the uh, receiving compound. So then this if this C phase diagram so then it's they are almost dead. So here shows the shear textures uh, of two anatomers that are receiving on the homotopic condition. We can see there's only four brush similarities. This uh, strongly suggests the ground state is meant to see star ferroelectric phase instead of cement state A phase uh, for these two anatomers. We, since we really use this compound for SG measurement, we want to come, we want to uh, characterize it in the phase sequence. Uh, it, this compound has uh, an antitropic or cement C star phase. Uh, this is a texture of this compound. Uh, 2D X-ray patterns. So then we can get the uh, layer spacing at the tilt angle. Uh, switch current response show only one single peak uh, suggests that FE switch is for this compound. As we did for the same host material, we also make a receiving of this compound. This is the SS enantiomer, we made an RR enantiomer. So by mixing uh, them uh, in the ratio of the 1 to 1, so we, make, we made this mixture. So this is shear texture of this uh, resonate on the neutral condition. As you can see, we saw a lot of high stress defects. This is the detail. We, we saw the, uh, 20 brush, 16 brushes, uh, even to 4 brushes from uh, stress minus 5 to class minus, minus 1. So only four and four times brush similarities were observed in this resonator, strongly suggesting ground state cement C star phase instead of cement C A star phase for their anatomies. So this by doing this we confirm ground state ferroelectricity. So then we're going to use uh, uh, we're going to do the as a demand, we're going to use this 10% of this chromophodiamine material in the same host material. We also characterize the, the phase sequence of this mixture. Uh, as expected, is 
almost identical as the data, the state house material. Here shows the uh, temporary dependent 2D X and X3 patterns. So this may confirm the DSC phase sequence of isotropic cement A star space this star glass. So these three pictures show cement A phase and then all of these pictures show the cement C star phase. So we also get uh, their spacing for A phase and C phase. It's interesting to mention here uh, these are X tune angles. We, we can see it's almost a constant, about 24 degrees during cement C star physics. Uh, this is feature current response for this picture. It's only one single peak, so suggests an FE switching. This uh, confirms the bistable switching for this mixture. Here shows the Schmier texture of this mixture under homotropic conditions. We only see the four brush singularities. So after uh, characterize the ground state of electricity of this material, then we will do the SAT measurements. Here, this picture shows the polarization configuration and the molecular orientation in uh, SAT measurement. As you can see, the yellow one is the coplanar uh, electrodes. This electric field, and uh, this is a, a fundamental light. This is the second harmonic light. So, the P uh, is the P polarization is a parallel electric field. S polarization is a perpendicular electric field. So we here is a side view for this diamond. The fundamental light source is the Yard laser with a wavelength of 64 nanometer, and the Vekart quartz crystal was used for calibration. Uh, this is a cell we use for SNG measurement. The gap between coplanar -pla -co electrodes is only 6 millimeter. So uh, this is a uh, clear electric, electric field that is a mm. parallel or perpendicular cross polarizers. But uh, if we rotate the, this cell to a certain, uh, by the, uh, maybe 30 degree, we, we observe maximum birefringence. So suggest so uh, here, has a high oriented chromophore. So in order to get an uh, optimized temperature for SHG signals, we did a temperature-dependent SHG signal uh, measurement. As you can see, uh, uh, when we apply 400, uh, uh, when we apply PC voltage of 400 volts and uh, 170 degrees, we start observing uh, the SHG signal. Then uh, the drop of temperature increases the uh, SRT signals. At the, uh, the 50 degree, we observe the maximum. Then uh, it keep constant uh, until room temperature. It's interesting to mention uh, at a certain degree, if it switch off the electric field after 10 minutes, the SRT level drop to uh, drop to the level at uh, about 120 degrees. After two hours, it's dropped to the level about 130 degree. So here I want to sh sh show you the electric field we use for orienting chromophore is only 0.1 to 0.5 volts per micro. In contrast, for input polymer system, people always use 10 to 50 volts per micro to orient chromophore. So. We get the SHG uh, measurement of how to process the data. So we use this equation to process our data. So this is a simplified form from the Hermann's equation for absorbing, absorbing materials. If we assume a low incidence and absorption only at uh, 2 omega. Uh, in this equation, the effective D tensor equals D to 2 for the PP polarization. So we measure three different samples with uh, different thickness, one, two, three, four, seven, five, nine, Then 
a good speed of this SFG intensity, SFG intensity to a theoretical curve gives the D coefficient as a scale factor. It's a 1.5. So we also check the other D coefficients. We found that it's much smaller than D to 2. And uh, uh, the host of material of the SFGT efficiency is very small compared to this mixture. So that's why the, uh, the, the D2 to coefficient for this uh, uh, material was extrapolated to 50 picometer, picometer per volt. It's three times as large as the best uh, um, FLC material previously reported in future one. So, if long-linear optical response has a pure electronic origin, then the R coefficients are related to the D coefficient by this equation. So, then we can calculate R22 to be 35 picometers per volt. It's larger than R33 of the racing limit. If this is correct, this means this, this is the largest R coefficient value reported to date for liquid crystals. So, recently, uh, Professor Dave Wobble reported uh, this compound with the uh, electron optic coefficient of about 5 picometer per volt. Mm -hmm. So, we also made a, a, a lineup of this compound, 2791. As I showed before, so for this UV based spectrum of these two compounds, if, if we compare, this compound was shift to grow about more than 60 nanometer. So, this might account for two or three times difference uh, between uh, uh, this hyperpolar polarizability and also the D coefficient. And uh, also, since we, we did uh, uh, SRG measurement at 532, it might have had a strong resonance enhancement. So this, might, this may uh, account for a lot of two or three times difference between these two compounds. So I think we can explain this difference. So um, we synthesize and characterize the four types of other graded materials: the DSC, 2D, X-ray, and electro-optical uh, studies come from a ground state and fair electric physics. Uh, SG measurement gives the largest D coefficient recorded to date. So the development of material, materials with much stronger chromophores and the polymeric water materials are currently in progress. Uh, the material synthesis and the characterization was carried out in this playtime. SFTT was done in Spain, and the 2D uh, extreme measurement was done in Germany. So finally, I would like to thank the National Science Foundation SBR program for generous support of this work. Um, thank you very much for your attention. I will be very happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Thank you to the speaker and uh, there are the questions. Nobody? Okay, I have a question, very practical one. Uh, did you do some torture test on those materials? My question is, could you run them for for a long time? Uh, there are those other loops there, right? And there is no fact that sometimes you can get oxidation to the azoxys compound. So, do those compounds perform really well in a long, long time? We didn't observe any oxidation for this compound. Um, maybe to the the, quest, uh, the question is, if you look at the absorption spectra and if you look, um, you know, absorption spectra in one day and in a half a year you take the same uh, same material after you have done a lot of experiments with it, do they shift or not? Mm, maybe not. Maybe not. Yeah. Look at here. Uh, we we done the uh, UV spectrum just uh, just after the main solutions. So, but uh, if you leave that solution uh, zero, you know, overnight, uh, you don't see the, the color change. So this means there is no, because the color change, I think, uh, uh, might, if the uh, spectrum changes, uh, 
this really has a culture. The question I was asking because uh, there is more group here who work with those, uh, these other compounds, for instance, attached to the surface, so we are really concerned about stability of those systems. But that's fine, well, thank you very much. And other questions? Hi. Right. <laughs> Well, then you just wasn't out here. <laughs> it's a, a practical experiment. You know, we had the lower SHG measurements in ferroelectrics about uh, 30, 40 years ago. And when you apply a field to a ferroelectric, if you go back to your texture picture, you don't have a uniform field. You've got you've got in-plane electrodes at the surface. And if you look at that texture diagram, you've got very different fields near the electrodes and to the center of the electrodes. And you can measure factors of three or four in your SHG coefficients depending on where your field is. So my question is, where is your being in that direction? Uh, the, the SHG measurement was done in Spain, so they always uh, work for the central area of the, because our gap is very big, the 46. Yeah, it's really interesting to translate across the cell and actually look at the SHG signal at different positions. It can change by a factor of three. Oh, really? Because, because of the field in inhomogeneity in inclined electrodes. It, it's just, you may, you, may, you may even have a bigger kind of new thing, D2. Oh, okay. Yeah. So maybe I let them know to, maybe they already check, I don't know, but maybe I let them know to check this and then yeah. and they do that stuff. Thank yeah. you so much. I think you might have more numbers than you think. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Thank you. All right, I think we might have time for one more question where we setting up, or are we set up? I'm contacting the mother show. Oh. <laughs> All right, if there are no other questions, so I thank you very much. It was a very interesting talk, and we will proceed to the next question. Mm -hmm.